After more than a decade, the next installment in the iconic Armored Core franchise is set to release. We're only a few months away from launch. Hey there, friends. My name is Kodiak. Welcome back to Legacy Gaming. Thanks to the team over at Bandai Namco, we were invited to a behind-closed-doors presentation and hands-off demo of Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. And today, we're here to unpack all of the exciting new details we're allowed to share. I'll be honest, I've never been the biggest fan of mech-related games. They typically aren't my cup of tea. Livid, on the other hand, Zone of Enders, Hawken, Armored Core, Titanfall. You name it, he's probably played it. However, I think it's safe to say Armored Core 6, based on everything we've seen so far, is looking extremely appealing to the both of us, and that should tell you something about the game. Today we're sharing several clips of gameplay, as well as a whole host of information we put together during the presentation. We'll go ahead and show each clip in full before talking about it in detail, as well as timestamping each section down below. That way, you can enjoy some raw gameplay with no commentary, but also get the lowdown on what's going on after. A little bit of something for everyone here. With all that out of the way, let's roll the first clip. We open on Grid 086, a very expansive, very vertical play space, which was a common sight during the presentation in both indoor and outdoor areas, and plays into the notion that there are multiple ways in any level to approach your objective. Initially, we get a really grounded feeling from the mech as we boost off the platform and begin to travel across the structure. We then abruptly jump off the side, and before our mech falls too far down, flight mode is engaged for a short duration before turning on what the team is calling the Assault Boost, a core feature of AC6, to cover a sizable chunk of distance quickly. We're even able to side boost while in this mode before descending and coming to a stop. Even though you can't see the UI on any of the clips today, during the presentation, energy did seem to drain substantially during sustained flight, with boosting being the other main source of energy drain. Our mech then takes to the air once more and Assault Boost is engaged again, but in a more downward direction this time, showing you you do have a degree of flexibility when it comes to core features in traversal and combat. From here, it's fighting time, as we make our final approach to a cluster of enemies spread out across varying heights. A short volley of rockets is fired before using Assault Boost, and your side boosters in combination to rapidly close the gap on an enemy mech before using a laser blade to dispatch it quickly. Combat overall in AC6 is somewhere between Armored Core 3 and Armored Core 5, with numerous instances where instantaneous bursts of speed and tempo reach the frantic levels of Armored Core 4. Vertical catapults are also used across the game to allow your mech to reach heights that would otherwise take much longer to reach by boosting onto multiple platforms. You'll also notice that combat feels much more deliberate when it comes to attacking versus evading enemy attacks. It's clear FromSoft is bringing over their core design pillar from other games, that sense of accomplishment from hard-won battles. Every encounter is essentially a puzzle that you'll need to watch, experience, and adapt to in order to overcome it.
The second clip shows our same medium weight mech traverse vertically and enter into a more confined space, another design element that will be sprinkled throughout the game. It's important to be aware of your surroundings and get the jump on enemies in a situation like this. Our mech unfortunately encounters an ambush in a still rather confined area. Here we see the shield feature in AC6 in full effect, allowing you to defend against difficult situations like the barrage of enemy gunfire coming from this mech, giving you the opportunity to look for a way to counterattack. Finally, we get a look at the scanning feature that allows you to detect enemies up to a certain distance away. In AC6, you'll want to gather as much info as you can before heading into an encounter, and having knowledge of the enemy types and attacks they may deploy goes a long way to keeping you safe. We do see a lot of aerial side boosting, missile pods being used to devastating effect, and again, the assault boost to close in on that last enemy and deliver a swift kick as a final blow. This final clip starts off showcasing a foundational system of any Armored Core title, the Assembly. For those that don't know, this is where you'll be able to fully customize your mech, change the weapons, your energy generator, and even your mech's body parts. Things like the legs are core components that help determine your mech's weight class and agility, impacting every other choice you make during this stage. During the presentation, the medium weight nature of the mech we had been using resulted in it dying, so the decision was made to switch to lighter legs, making the overall frame more agile. As you can see in this combat section, being able to evade enemy attacks and reposition for counters is incredibly important. In AC6, you'll also be focused on the impact and stagger mechanics. Weapons will deliver varying degrees of impact damage, and once the enemy has received enough impact damage in a short window, a bar will fill up and trigger stagger. When staggered, any damage received during this window will be treated as a direct hit and inflict massive damage. An otherwise resilient enemy like this one here can quickly be brought down by understanding this system inside and out. Now we round out this last clip with a showcase of an early boss, the RD-024 Smart Cleaner. The dynamic range of attacks coupled with this being highly telegraphed shows how FromSoft's other titles have influenced the complexity and difficulty of boss encounters in Armored Core 6. Things as simple as making sure your mech is customized in a way suited for the encounter can be a determining factor in whether you succeed or fail. Even a single hit from this boss puts us in critical health range before ultimately getting finished off. It's incredible to think that on August 25th, in just two short months, we'll finally have Armored Core 6 in our hands after more than a decade. The combination of elements from multiple entries into the franchise, coupled with the design philosophy that makes Souls games so damn good, is all front and center here, shaping this next installment and an iconic franchise. We're hoping it lives up to the hype, especially after having next to nothing in the way of mech titles to play over the past decade. The ambition and complexity seem to be there, but we'll have to see if the game holds up to the avid fan base of the series and the genre. Friends, we are incredibly excited to learn more about Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon, and can't wait to eventually go hands-on. 
What piqued your interest about this gameplay showcase today? Let us know in the comments section below, and if AC6 looks like your kind of game, be sure to keep it right here by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. It's safe to say we are excited to review this one. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.